Want to use a PGR in your cereals but have no time for a separate pass? Manipulator PGR can be applied as early as one tiller. Just add it to your herbicide to reduce lodging, increase harvest efficiency, and maximize yields. Talk to your retailer for more info and to confirm acceptable tank mixes. Hi, this is Real Agriculture and I am Amber Bell here with Dr. Derek McKenzie of the University of Alberta. Tell us about the project that you've been working on about the soil health database. Yeah, so we started three years ago um, working on a database for ag agricultural soil health in Alberta. And we're calling it the DASH, so the Database for Alberta Soil Health. And it's Alberta Innovates funded project where we're trying to form a consolidated agricultural database in the province. And the reason for doing that is because we've been collecting agricultural data for nearly 100 years now, and yet none of that data is accessible to the broader research community for you know, aggregating values up to a provincial or national level. Most of the data exists on, in Excel sheets on personal computers in different research labs across the province, or worse, it's on historic computer punch cards in you know, some retired Government of Alberta soil scientist garage. So why and how was this data collected to begin with? Like, where? What's the background yeah, on this? So, so the data. So it's basically it's agronomic data. It's been collected over for the, almost the last hundred years at long-term research sites like the Breton plots, but also sort of all across the province. Um, regional research associations are collecting data on best management practices, and we're basically trying to learn how to manage Alberta soils and Alberta climate for maximum productivity. Yeah, there's a lot of data that's available, and yet it hasn't been consolidated in a database. Right, and so who would this be made available to, this database? So the data is, is going to have a couple different functions. So part of the data, the back end of the database will be used by researchers and network partners to aggregate data and to really sort of move forward best management practices for increasing soil health, right? And so what we've learned is that soil health is just a metaphor for soil function and management practices affect soil function. And if we want, and our soils in Alberta are, are very high function, very healthy, very high function soils. But if we want them to, to continue to function at that high level, we need to start using management practices that maintain that function. Right, so agronomists would have access to this or? So, so yeah, so, you, so the original, your question was, who's gonna use the data? So research scientists will use the back end of the database for aggregating data at the provincial, the national scale for carbon sequestration, greenhouse gas reporting, um, and agronomic best management practices. And, and then agronomists will use the front end of the database. Agronomists and farmers will use the front end of the database to upload their farm soil testing data. And the, the database will output soil health and management prescription for them. And eventually, it should have the capacity to output carbon sequestration values for carbon credits or carbon economy. And it should be able to calculate greenhouse gas emissions and come up with an overall carbon balance for the farm, which theoretically with modern regenerative agriculture best management practices would be negative, would be significantly negative carbon balance so that you are getting paid for all that carbon sequestration on your farm. And so the front end would be a tool that would employ the back end data. So all of your neighbor's data would go into telling you something about your soil health. Um, but none of your neighbors would be able to see your soil health per se. They would be able to see yours, but your data would, would help inform the, the, the region. For that area. For that area, right. yeah. And the, the database, the, the other thing that's really interesting about the data science is that um, we're going to start tapping into artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is, is becoming sort of widespread and, and has lots of uses in agriculture for helping to predict best management practices and to predict carbon sequestration. And also, hopefully we'll, soon we'll have um, weather prediction coming online as well cool. that will help with management decisions. And you've been working on this for how long and how, like, where in the project are yeah, you? Yeah, so we've been working on this for three years. We're just at the end of, uh, at the end of this year is the third year where, where, where um, phase one funding ends at the end of this year. And we have scoped out the project and we have begun to build a database and we have begun to work with network partners to access historic data and even contemporary research data. 
and we're moving into phase two starting next year we're going to reach out to funding partners like results driven agricultural research alberta innovates um, canane is the canadian alliance for innovative uh, network prairie canada for phase two funding and in phase two what i'd like to see is an amalgamation there's a couple databases that are being developed in alberta currently but I would argue that we don't need 10 different agricultural databases. We just need one consolidated database for the entire province. Um, and then, and theoretically sometime in the future, there would be a consolidated agricultural database in every single province across the country. And then at the national level, there would be a federated database, which would be a system that was capable of communicating with all of the consolidated databases. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't store any data, but it would communicate with all the consolidated databases where all the data would be. Okay. Uh, and that's a really yeah. big project. So what, what made you want to get into this? Where, where did the passion come from? Mm. It, that's a great question. I think, I think it, it stems from the idea that, that we need... Uh, an agricultural database like a, a human health database, really where it comes from. Human health and soil health, are. there's a lot of similarities there and, and, and they're related to each other. So you can, you know, I have lots of farmer partners that argue that soil health equals human health. And without soil science, right, humans would be naked, hungry, thirsty, and homeless. Mm. Right? Doesn't sound like a very good life. Yeah, right? So we need to bring soil science into the 21st century with big data. Mm -hmm. And so human, so human health and pharmacology and other industries are already employing the, the, the power of data science and machine learning and artificial intelligence um, for better management. And I think agriculture needs to do the same thing. And so it really comes from health sciences. So the idea that um, you know, we can track human health at a global level because we have databases. Mm -hmm. And so if we had agricultural soil databases, we could track agricultural soil health at a global scale if we had databases to do it. And I think that's really going to be critical for climate change mitigation, for trying to fight climate change. We need better data on, and we need better, yeah, better data and better and more research on management techniques that are gonna sequester more carbon in the soil. Right. Well, that's amazing. It's amazing work. And I'm really excited to hear what comes of this project because that's a, that's a big one. And this was Dr. Derek McKenzie on Real Agriculture.